The year is 1840 near the Capel Valley in the summertime. The Cree people of Capel Valley are preparing for winter and are concerned about the lack of food. They decided to hold a gathering to discuss their lack of winter resources. All the adults are present at the meeting and they are pondering solutions. The hunt was successful and the women were close behind, ready to process the meat. Then they moved swiftly and efficiently as not to waste any of the precious buffalo. The four of them butchered the animal and began carrying it back to camp. Once back at the camp, the entire community works together to process the animal. Skin is being tanned, tools, clothes, and pemmican are being made. The entire buffalo is used. The Cabell Valley tribe celebrated the hunt and yet another prosperous winter. Little did they know that within the next 20 years, their food supply would be depleted because of newcomers of a different land and they would be facing starvation. Chief Sparkling Eyes stood shaking his weak, elderly body, faced yet another horizon, ending a day without food. Bighorn and Running Bear were exhausted after countless unsuccessful buffalo hunts. Over the past several years, the European newcomers had taken their land and hunted their main food supply, the buffalo, to near extinction, thus leaving the same fate for the Capel Valley tribe to a loss of a culture, tradition, and numerous promises of being unfulfilled. After the Europeans arrived to the new land, they quickly realized they needed to open up the land for farming and to build railroads in order to support the new population. They decided to sign treaties with First Nations people in hopes of meeting the needs of both parties. They understood that the key people were struggling as much as they were and they needed a solution to help both the Europeans and the First Nations and felt that European concepts and ideas were superior to the First Nations ideas. After many weeks, the British Crown met with the native chiefs and after many days of negotiation and discussion, a treaty was signed. The treaty indicated which geographical region they would settle in. Life for the Cree people changed drastically after they settled on the reserves. After many days of debating and discussing, a treaty was set. The Europeans wanted the land for settlement. The government threatened the First Nations with a specter of approaching settlement and the possibility of receiving no compensation or protection from the government at all. This forced the First Nations to sign a treaty and give up their freedom and their traditional lifestyle. The Treaty 4 guaranteed that each tribe would have a school with a teacher, hunting and fishing rights other than occupied government land, and $750 a year for powder, shot, bale, and twine. Every family of five got 640 acres of land, two hoes, one spade, one scythe, and an axe for farming. Every 10 families got one plow and one harrow. Each chief got one yoke for oxen, one bull, four cows, a chest of carpentry tools, five hand saws, four augers, and one cut saw, one pit saw, the necessary files, and one grindstone. Each Indian person got $500 annually, a gift of clothing, and $25 annually, a coat, a new silver medal, and a coat of suiting every three years. Each headman got $15 gift and a $15 annually, as well as a suit of clothing every three years. The reserve was extremely different. The first big change was the dwelling as they had to have a permanent home now instead of their portable teepee. They could no longer wander across the land and were forced to stay on the reserve and the log cabins were built. Their lives were also changed because they were introduced to New European style of clothing rather than their traditional native clothing. Their transportation changed from traveling by foot to using horses and wagons. The last change that occurred was their food type and source. They were given flour, sugar, and European ideas for cooking, for example, and Economically, the worldview of First Nations changed drastically. Rather than living off the land, they adapted to living on the reserve. They survived off of yearly rations, hunted, picked berries, and learned how to garden. Under the watchful eye of the Indian agent, changes began to take place. Bighorn realizes that his family needs meat to supplement the rations by going hunting. Bighorn talks to Running Bear to go hunting. They had to see the Indian agent to get a pastor to leave the reserve. Bighorn and Running Bear leave the reserve in search of a moose. Because of the res- reserve system, women had to stay home and Bighorn and Running Bear have to do the hunting and bring moose home alone. They are limited as to what they can take for tools. Bighorn and Running Bear have a successful hunt, got all, but all they got was elk. When Bighorn and Running Bear return from their hunt, they have to check with the Indian agent. It was hard for the Cree people to adjust, but they tried their best. 
The treaty was hard on the Cree people and benefited the Europeans a lot. The Cree were stripped of their traditional lifestyle, their culture, but adapted to the European way of living.